Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. With all the focus on patching and patching quickly, it's sometimes sad to see how apparently old vulnerabilities are still a thing or are still working well enough for attackers to actually exploit them. And Xavier did run into an example where a malicious Word document exploited the good old equation editor vulnerability from back in 2017. So essentially a I guess, five-year-old vulnerability now. The Word document here arrives sort of as a fuzzy image uh, with a magnification class to click on. So essentially the user is sort of enticed to click on that image, which then in turn launches the equation editor if the victim is vulnerable and does inject the malicious code, which is essentially just a batch file that will load additional malware from a particular IP address. Also interesting kind of here that only an IP address is being used, not a host name. This is something that I always tell people to watch out for any outbound connections that uh, go to an IP address that is not the result of a DNS resolution first is usually suspicious with few exceptions and there are some nice seek scripts, for example, to detect this kind of behavior. When teaching web application security and talking about cross-site scripting, there are usually sort of a couple points I make, but the two points are that first of all, one of the most difficult type of applications to create is a webmail application because you often have to render HTML that's delivered as part of the email as part of the HTML webmail client. And of course, then it's difficult to keep things straight. This is even more difficult if you are, in addition to plain HTML, also attempting to render, for example, open office documents. And that's apparently what Horde, the webmail client, the open source webmail client, has been attempting to do. And well, when they implemented this function nine years ago, they made a mistake that leads to a cross-site scripting vulnerability that has now been found by Sonar Source and fixed by the Hoarder project. Sonar Source published a nice blog post going into the details as to what exactly went wrong here. And it gets me sort of to the second point that I often make about cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are often underestimated as to what an attacker is able to do with them. This blog post not just does a good job in explaining the nature of the vulnerability here, but also how to exploit it and how to use it to take over an email account using this vulnerability. So I'm not sure how important that patch is and how many people actually still use sort of these open source webmail clients uh, these days. That's definitely number one here. But uh, even if you're not using Horda, the blog post makes a good read to really sort of understand some of these cross-site scripting issues better. Now, when it comes to phishing in particular, when we're talking about two-factor authentication, it usually involves some kind of proxy and essentially getting into a machine in the middle position. Now, a simple proxy, of course, will often work, uh, or sometimes you also have these sort of uh, machine in the browser attacks where an attacker would load a malicious uh, extension that then acts as a proxy. But a really interesting alternative is shown in a blog post by Mr. Docs. And now uh, this uh, version of the attack does not use a classic proxy. Instead, the victim, after clicking on the phishing link, is directed to a web page that's actually a uh, no VNC session. No VNC is VNC, the remote desktop over HTML. So it's often used like in tools like Proxmox and such uh, to implement uh, remote terminals. But if you configure it right, then it looks just like a web page because you're running a 
browser in a kiosk mode and the Mr. Docs block here does walk you through the process of setting that up. Now, what this means is that instead of connecting to the target website, the user or the victim here is connecting uh, to a terminal. That terminal loads the target website, so there's absolutely no TLS warning or anything here, and it appears to be a normal browser session, but of course, the attacker has essentially a proxy-like position here and is able to record all keystrokes. Pretty interesting approach. Uh, also, uh, one way how this can be used as well is to run a browser in the cloud. I've done that uh, on occasion. Uh, if uh, you do, for example, want to visit a uh, possible phishing website. So you want to explore it and you don't want to open a link on your own PC. You sort of can fire up a machine in the cloud and uh, run uh, via no VNC a browser that will then allow you uh, to quickly visit the site. Anyway, interesting blog post, some particular for the penetration testers out there. And then finally, just a quick mention that there is another update for your Synology NAS. I mentioned before, this is sort of one of the things that uh, I have been focusing on, all these vulnerabilities in NASes that don't appear to go away and also do not expose them to the internet. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.